Why did you decide to start Mooney Insurance Brokers? Uh, I think it was important for me to really start something. For some reason, I just had that in the back of my mind. You're is, entrepreneurial. Yeah. And, you know, through my family, through various, you know, different uh, businesses growing up, I just always kind of gravitated towards that. And so in doing insurance, I just looked at it like this is a great opportunity. I, I can do this. You know, I could maybe continue on working for, you know, a different agency. But for me, where I wanted to go and how I wanted to do it, I really felt like it had to be on, on my terms. Welcome to the podcast dedicated to real estate, insurance, and everything in between. Join us as we take you along our own brokerage building journeys with additional wisdom from our network of business experts. Welcome to Bricks and Risk. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Bricks and Risk. I'm Tim Garrity. I'm Sean Mooney. And today we're going to do an intro episode. We're uh, unfortunately going to have to talk about ourselves because this is one of our first episodes and we have to let people know who we are, what we do and why we're here. So um, I'll start with you, Sean. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. I'm Sean Mooney, president of Mooney Insurance Brokers. We are an independent insurance brokerage in, based out of Ambler, Pennsylvania. And our story is a simple story in a way. Um, my background is that I was working for an Allstate agency. Yeah, it was a family agency, wasn't yep. it? Yeah. Yeah, close by in Huntington Valley, not yep. far uh, from where we are. Um, but uh, really got introduced into doing insurance uh, by way of service and sales. Uh, for that agency, um, doing you know service on the exi existing book of business with clients, uh, with a focus on car insurance, home insurance, life insurance, and I liked it. I said this is a this is a pretty good business. Yeah, uh, industry to be in, uh, a lot of room for growth, a lot of different ways that you can go. And you enjoyed it, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, and so started out like very low level, just doing, you know, picking up the phone, dealing with people's issues, yep. claims, billing, and that sort of thing. And by the end, it was more of a sales-based uh, position where it was, you know, monthly sales, yeah. you know, how quotas long, and all that. So how long did you do that before you started your own brokerage? How many years? So 10 it was 10 oh, years under yeah. my belt uh, prior to jumping out and then getting going on my own. And why would you say, what was the biggest driving factor? Because, you know, I have a similar story, but what was the big driving factor to say, I'm not just going to work at an agency? I mean, you could have worked your way up to like a manager or maybe a yeah. partner yep. um, over time because you're good at it. Why did you decide to start Mooney Insurance Brokers? Uh, I think it was important for me to really start something. For some reason, I just had that in the back of my mind. You're is, entrepreneurial. Yeah. And, you know, through my family, through various, you know, different uh, businesses growing up, I just always kind of gravitated towards that. And so in doing insurance, I just looked at it like, this is a great opportunity. I, I can do this. You know, I could maybe continue on working for, you know, a different agency. But for me, where I wanted to go and how I wanted to do it, I really felt like it had to be on, on my terms. Yeah. And really for growth and, you know, where I saw uh, my value and really looking down the road as to like where I wanted to be, just that ownership. Uh -huh. Um, of a business, it was important to me yeah. in a lot of ways. That's a great story. Um, and you're from the area. Yep. 
Grew up in Glenside, Pennsylvania. Just like our man Dylan over here. Dylan, 19038. I don't have the tattoo yet. I don't think you're ever going to get a tattoo because I've known you since I was about 10 years old. So I'm going to say that probably won't happen, but I'll believe it when I see it. You know, maybe get it, you know, get it somewhere where people can't see it. Maybe like an ass cheek or something like that. Perhaps. Um, Tell us Copper Hill story. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Tim Garrity, um, the broker of record, one of the partners at Copper Hill Real Estate, helped start the brokerage from scratch, very similar to you. Um, my backstory is, you know, grew up in the local Philadelphia area, grew up in the suburbs, lived in the city for a couple of decades, absolutely loved it. But when I started in corporate America, um, I actually started out in the mortgage business. So I was, I was a loan officer and it's sales. It's kind of like a lot of jobs I had growing up. And I say everything is sales, by the way. That's true. Um, I mean, you can work at a hardware store. It's still sales. But even if you have nothing to do with sales... If you just have a role in a corporate office, yep. you're selling yourself. That's very true. So for me, how good can you sell yourself? Yeah. Right? You're selling yourself to your manager, yep. to the CEO, the president, whoever, you're, you know, your chain of command. It's, I always say everything comes down to sales. No, I like that. And, and I agree. And it's like, you know, you and I both come from sales. So like I start out as, as an LO in the mortgage industry. It was a hundred percent commission, pretty risky. What year? What, let's give a timeline on this. This is 2002. So we're old. Um, and, uh, you know, I started doing, I did it for a couple of years and, and I liked it, but I didn't love it. Um, but through my networking, I met a real estate agent who said, Hey, my wife works for a builder and she's looking for a young manager. So I'm 24. I got that job. It was hard to get. I landed it. Was very proud of that. And while I was managing, again, I was selling the mortgage company. So it was like managing locally in Philadelphia, like our communities that our new construction communities that we built in and around the city, and then managing the mortgage process from application to closing. Like that was what I did. And I got good at managing people. And then I lost my job in 2009 when everything crashed. And I had an opportunity to really think about what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to stay in sales. I wanted to stay in the relationship business. I didn't want to do mortgages anymore, but I didn't fall far from that tree. I decided to get my real estate license, which, you know, you got to be a complete self-starter to do that. You got to pay for the classes. You got to sit in them. You have no idea how much you're going to make. You have no idea where you're going to work. Like you're just doing this to like, okay, I'll go be a realtor. What was, what was the like driver where you're like, I want to do real estate. Like, like what, how, how do you go from like mortgage and corporate then to be like, I'm going to real estate? I think the first thing um, that really attracted me to real estate was really you're working more with people and like problem solving and like representing them. Whereas in, in the mortgage industry, it's kind of just like numbers and steps. Now, again, you have to like, you have to help uh, put their worries at ease with like, if the rates go up, the rates go down. So you're, again, you're calming people down. You're solving problems. I'm just not a numbers guy. Like I'm fine with them, but it's not one of my passions. Like people, I love helping people. Like I've always, a lot of the jobs I've had growing up, like restaurants and setting up beach equipment and even selling newspapers, like they're happy getting the paper from you because it's Sunday morning and it's the weekend and maybe it's summer and they're like, this is great. And you're just helping them. They're reading it like, oh, thanks. Here's a tip. So, you know, I've always liked that. And I think getting into real estate, I knew I was really going to be more involved with people and more hands on. Like you're you're in person, like mortgages back then. Yeah, you maybe you did a paper application. Right. Again, we're old. Um, but, you know, everything is digital now. And real estate is never going to be digital because you got to go see the house. You have to go see the neighborhood. You have to do inspections. I mean, these are, again, not every time, but most of the time, these are the things that happen. Do people buy homes sight unseen? They do. Do people waive inspections and buy homes with cash? Yes. But you're still working with them. You're still going there. There's probably a closing. There's an opportunity to connect. And, you know, I think seeing that, I just wanted to go do it. And I was in corporate America for like 10 years. So I went out, I worked for two small brokerages for about five years. And I started taking my broker classes at night, knowing that I liked it. And, you know, after five years, I had a broker's license. I had two people that were willing to start a brokerage from scratch, which has a low barrier of entry. And we just went lean with our office and our expenses. And 
poof, Copper Hill was born in the end of 2014. I think we got our license approval, like our inspection approval. Like, I think it was like Christmas Eve, like 2014. Did you celebrate? Or was, like, it, a, Merry, was it a night out? Merry what? Christmas, boys. <laughs> so, I'm sure we did. <laughs> hey, everyone. This is Tim, your favorite Bricks and Risk co-host. But don't tell Sean. I hope you're enjoying this episode, and I'll get right back to it in a moment. Our audience grows through word of mouth. So if you would please take a moment of your time and give us a review on the platform you're on, that would be fantastic. Please also help spread the BNR word by sharing your favorite episode with a friend. We greatly appreciate your time and trust. Now, back to the show. Yeah, that's my story. And um, I want to I want to shift a little bit now that um, everyone knows who we are. The next thing I want to ask is like, how'd we get here? Like, why why are we doing this? Like bricks and risk. Like you and I came up with that. Well, I'm not going to take credit for that. You came up with that. Wait, what was the name you came up with? Oh, it was God awful, whatever it was. Uh, brokers building businesses. <laughs> the real estate and insurance. <laughs> introductory <laughs> podcast i think <laughs> we could still in we'll, we'll check that we'll yeah check we'll, that. we'll let you know we'll we have to check the text message chain to make sure i actually said that which i didn't but again we'll go with it Close. something um, similar but let's let's talk about let's talk about the story i love a good story in business because the story helps people relate to how things happen so again, this doesn't just happen. You don't just wake up and like, here's our name. Like, here's our brand. Like, here's where we're going. Like, there's many, many, many steps. We've been talking about this for months. Planning, spending money, um, organizing. A lot of layers. Yeah. So tell me, so, you know, based on your recollection, uh, of, recollection how this of, went the, down? of the story, how, how did this come to be? Uh, I don't know the date. I don't know when it, when it occurred. It was the summertime. Yep. And I remember, don't even know why I called you. We were on the phone. And somehow it came up. I think just generally speaking, yeah, like, we're talking. Listen to podcasts. Listening podcast. Like that. Oh, I yep. heard this on this podcast. Or, eh. And then I think that you were talking about. Oh, I was a guest on this. And my first uh, reaction was, "You need a podcast." Yeah, that's what it was. It was like, "You need a podcast." If you can do a podcast, right, it's going to massively change your business. I agree. And that that's yeah. how I remember it, it going. And, and I literally remembering, I think if I have it right, is me, I was on my way to the shore. You have, you have three kids. So remember we have short-term memory yeah. loss. I was on my way to the shore, but I, I, we started on the, when I called, it was, I started on the Walt Whitman bridge, got down the shore, parked the car. We were yeah. still going. Yeah. For like another 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, you were driving the shore. I do remember that. About the idea, because it evolved from it evolved from me saying, you need a podcast. To we, we need a podcast. Because you said, you said, well, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I like the idea, but I couldn't do it. I would have to have someone do it with me. Yep. And then that kind of snowballed into, well... I really like podcast. Let's do it together. All right, and I'm going to I'm going to add one more detail, okay, which you may may remember or may not or maybe left out, but when we were having that conversation and both being on the same page, it's like, yeah, like we think we could do it as individuals, but wouldn't it be fun to do it together and we have complementary industries. Yeah. Not only that, we have complementary business backgrounds and stories like starting businesses from scratch, and I remember when we were talking about it and you were like, "Garrity, you want to hear something? I've had two microphones in my office for over a year. Like you bought them yep. with the intention yep. of doing something, yep. whether it be a video or a podcast, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. And then I started dying laughing. And Wait, hold on. It gets better. There's a thing called like a cloud lifter. Dylan, do you know what that is? It's like some rigmarole hookup that I thought I needed. I'm like, well, if I do my podcast. You are a gadget dude. If I do my podcast, I'm definitely going to need this. That's because I need to I, sound I, like gold. <laughs> and, and so it's it literally, it's in my office. 
in a closet. I could go pull it out now. Yeah. But I always wanted to do that. I and, and during the pandemic, I had thoughts of like, hey, I'll do this and I'll do this podcast and I have these ideas. And it just never, yeah. it just never kind of came together. Yeah. And in talking to you, it's like, I'm like, what? Well, first and foremost, what do we have to lose? Maybe a little bit of money and some time. Yeah. But really, you and I had the same mindset. We're like, look, it's just, it adds value. And and we have good stories. And yeah. just like we're telling the story of how we got started in business, where we're from, like how we got to where we are, there's a story to this. And we'll leave five cap basement stories. We will. Absolutely. We were in the same fraternity in college as well. So we we go back. Leave that. Yeah. Let's leave that where it is. Um, but uh, nice. here's another good part. Good part of the story is like, so we get out the Google Doc and we're like, oh my gosh, we got to do A, B, C, D. And we're putting all these things down. And we're like, let's come up with the name. Oh, yeah. And then I had the dumbest name, which I just said, it was like brokers building businesses or something like that. And I said, we'll call it triple B. And I'm like, well, what? and you started laughing, which again is fine because we can, we can laugh at each other. And, right. and I'm like, well, what do you got? And you were like, what about bricks and risk? And I was like, whoa, dude, that's like, that's awesome. Like bricks, like real estate and risk, like insurance. Yeah. I'm like, we're, we're done. Wait, no, 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 no. I, I don't know if I'm serious yeah, well, that. I mean, you were more into it than yeah, I was. I'm like, dude, I just like, awesome. Like, and, and then the name. I personally wanted the Tim and Sean show. <laughs> you did. <laughs> like, please no. <laughs> and, and so like, we're going through this. We're trying to figure it out. How do we do this? And coming up with the logo. Hey, we wanted something clean. Again, Brent Bush design. Took care of the logo. Check them out. Phone numbers below. That's right. Check them out on Instagram. He's got funny stuff. And check out his podcast. That's true. He does <laughs> well, a fantasy will, football podcast. We will link up the podcast. Someone we consented with to be like, yo, like, what did you do? Like consultant. Did, consulted. Consented. And um, coming up with bricks and risk, you know, we're like, hey, we're both from Philadelphia. Let's have some Philadelphia in it. And and this is very relevant now because the first Kelly Green. Philadelphia Eagles jersey game and I don't know how many years uh, was this past weekend against the Dolphins and they won it was an awesome game and we're like let's go old school Eagles yeah and that's that's why we came up with the green the white and the black as well as the fact it's like hey we're in business so green's the color of money so that that makes sense as well but I like to tell that story or just share that with everyone because I think it encourages people to not get paralysis by analysis don't overthink it. If you're thinking about doing something like this, we're a perfect example of a few months ago, we had a conversation. We're the perfect example of we shouldn't be doing this, but we are doing this, right? Absolutely. And I think you and I are very big. We're very big on authenticity. We're very big on being ourselves. We do this in business. We do this in life. You know, you got to be able to make fun of yourself. You got to be able to look at your failures as, as reasons to succeed. Yeah. And you have to know that, again, it takes time to do well in anything, including podcasting. And this is, this is an intro episode. So just know we are going to get much better at this, but at least get it. You're maybe, but you're getting a sense of who we are, where we come from and how this came to be. So just wanted to thank everyone for tuning into Bricks and Risk and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Bricks and Risk. Our goal is that you walk away with one or two valuable nuggets and we greatly appreciate you sharing your time with us today. You can find all BNR episodes on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and anywhere else you get your podcast content. Until next time, keep learning and keep growing.